Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blogs. So let's get to it. All right, rock stars. So let's see. What shall we talk about first today? Opening up the top of the blogs for the second week in a row is Cardi B. Okay. Looks like Cardi B and her sister Hennessy Carolina or Carolina and um, her girlfriend Michelle Diaz have found themselves in a lawsuit. That's right. They say that Peter and Pauline Calledo or Calledo and Manuel Alarcon Alarcon um, filed a lawsuit against the three and said that Hennessy and her girlfriend harassed them insulted them, assaulted them at a beach last week. Okay, actually it was beginning of September. I think this was actually Labor Day weekend. They basically said that Hennessy and her girlfriend um, had pulled up in their car and blocked Alarcon's, Alarcon's vehicle, okay? Blocked him in a parking space. When he walked up to their car, and um, he had on a Make America Great Again hat um, that they attacked him, went off on him, cussed him out, um, you know, let them tell it. Uh, Hennessy and her girlfriend spit on him, called him all types of niggas and motherfuckers and get out of my fucking face and we not doing this, that, and the other. Um, and uh, even threatened him, said that they have 9.5, well, Hennessy said that she had 9.5 million followers on social media and that, you know, once she pulled out of her, her camera, her phone to videotape this whole incident, she posted it. They're saying that with her post in that video and her sister, Cardi B, okay, well-known rap artist, uh, you know, posting it as well. Well, they're saying that Cardi B actually chopped up and edited the video to make it look like only the plaintiffs were at fault. Um, they did not show you know, they're saying that Cardi B did not show that Hennessy was just going crazy and spitting on them and saying all kind of foolishness and um, threatening them and their lives and all of that. Okay. And then Cardi B went on to post it to her even more followers on Twitter. And um, as a re result, the Calledos, excuse me if I'm not saying that right, and um, Mr. Alarcon are saying that they f they're fearful for their lives. They're saying that their character has been defamed. Um, they're saying that uh, they want punitive da damages. And, you know, I don't have to, <laughs> I don't know much about the law, but I do know that punitive usually means that it's money involved. They would like to be paid for being afraid for, you know, this tirade that Hennessy and her girlfriend did on them. Um, I don't know if they're going to get defamation of character. Like, uh, to me, it just seems like that's a really hard charge to prove. My rock star lawyers, you guys can chime in on this one. But to me, first of all, your character has to be known to a whole bunch of people. Like, you'd have to be a celebrity, it seems like, when people say defamation of character. You know, for, you know, anything to come about from something like this. Like, nobody knows who the Cayetos and the Alarcons are. And once this case goes by, nobody's going to care. But I might be wrong. I might be wrong. And maybe, you know, defamation of character, if... You know, maybe there's going to be a difference in this case because Cardi B and her sister together have millions and millions and millions of followers. And those people can pose a threat to, you know, you have fans and then you have fanatics who will do whatever they can to feel like they're helping you um, up to and possibly going and seeking those people out and making their lives miserable and doing things to them. So, I mean, it's it's not impossible so i mean i can understand why would they say that they afraid for their lives even though most 95 percent of the people are not going to come after them you, you know they, they can threaten on social media but um they're not going to take the time but you just don't never know about that other five percent that might just be crazy enough to come after them so that is why they're saying they're afraid for their lives and um 
uh, you know, th this case has come about. You know, the inter interesting thing about this story, though, is that we don't get, um, and maybe Hennessy and Cardi will talk about this later, but we don't get how it, like, the the Cayetos and the Alicones, you know, they're saying that as soon as he walked up to the, to the car to tell them to move, as soon as they saw the MAGA hat, that they just went off. Um, and, um, I mean, I guess, I, I guess that is definitely possible, but it, I just feel like there may have been some exchange, some back and forth that's gone, that's gone, you know, between the two of them that would elevate it, you know, uh, most reasonable people, and maybe, they, you know, maybe they're not reasonable, but most reasonable people, people don't just immediately go from one to 10, okay, or one to 100. Tennessee is saying that they told them to go back to their country, even though I'm listening to the, to, I mean, I'm reading up on it and I'm just like, well, Cayeto and Alarcon, I mean, they, they definitely can't be, I mean, I'm not saying that they're not American citizens, but somewhere along the lines, they family had to come on over here just like the rest of us. So I'm just like, <laughs> You know, you have all of these Latino, Latina people going back and forth and, and you know, I, and then I will never understand the Latino and the Latina support for YSAP. Like, I just don't get it. The things that they've done to y'all people, I mean, that we know for a fact that they've done to your people down there at the border and everything. And anyway, you guys, I mean, th th that's what's happening there. So the, the, the um, Galletos and the Alarcons, they are suing. Um, I don't know what's going to come of this case, um, if they're just going to settle because really they just want money, but you know, it's the principle of the thing. We just can't be paying motherfuckers all the damn time. So I don't know, but if this will go further, if we'll hear anything more about it, but yeah, that's what's happening there. Cardi B and Hennessy and Michelle, um, are being sued. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I'm trying to jump around so that, you know, my all my good topics don't be in the first part. And then, you know, the, the, the quickies type stories will be in the second part. So let me just kind of try to jump around here. They say that Tamar has released a statement. Um, uh, you know, she is out of her mental health facility. And I'm, I'm assuming that she is going to continue her therapy, but is, you know, from home, um, going to her appointments and, you know, speaking to her therapist or whatever. But um, she is no longer in the mental health facility. I did read the statement. It's very, very long. Um, Tamar loves to pose very long statements, but I'll give you the gist of it right here. She says that she knows that, you know, God has her basically, that she um, has battled mental health issues for many, many years. Um, and, um, basically God hasn't brought her this far to let her down. So, um, she's made some bad choices, uh, in the past, I guess, when it comes to men in particular, and, um, she's just not going to allow a person that's trying to um, hinder her path to good health and good mental health. Uh, she's just not going to tolerate that anymore. So I guess what she's saying is she is done with, David, uh, that is her boyfriend, you know, has been her boyfriend of the last couple of years. Um, I guess she's done. You know, her show is on um, WeTV. I asked you guys last week or a couple of weeks ago why I thought that they canceled the show. Um, and turns out, no, they didn't cancel the show. They have just decided that they will no longer work with Tamar. So I guess this is going to be the last project that Tamar has on WeTV. But then a little birdie told me, is, now, am I right? Or is the is Braxton Family Values coming back? See, this, this is the whole thing with, with them. They will stage all of these big protests and say they're not coming back and doing it. And then they'll be right back. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I have heard that there's talk that that Braxton Family Values will come back. I don't know if she's going to be held to having to, you know, deal with her contract with Braxton Family Values. Like, what happens then? Is that are they going to not have her involved or what? So you guys just let me know. Just let me know if Tamar is supposed to be scheduled in this whole. If that first of all is the Braxton Family Values thing even true? 
okay? And if it is, then is Tamar going to be a part of that? But anyway, back to Tamar. You guys, her show, I haven't watched it. Like I said, I saw Ashley was talking about it and she was saying how it's just weirdly done um, because they they talk to the pr production staff so much. Um, I kind of felt like maybe they were doing that because they were trying to have, have a more of like a documentary type look. And so, you know, when you hear... Um, when you see producers and things on camera, usually it's because they're trying to make it seem like it's more like a true peek into their lives as opposed to a reality show. So that's maybe that's what they're trying to do. I ain't seen it, so I don't know. That's just my educated or non-educated guess on it. But uh, yeah, you guys, I'm retiring Tamar unless something just really big happens. But you know, these the things with these mental health um you know, when people have these mental health crises, even when it comes to Kanye, because Kanye is another one that we have retired, okay? So every week y'all keep asking me to talk about Kanye. <laughs> Kanye is retired until something huge happens because it's the same shit over and over and over, okay? I just want everybody to get the fuck off social media and go take care of their mental health. We know social media is not the healthiest, even to somebody who is strong in the head. All right, so it definitely doesn't help somebody who has all of these in, these issues mentally that they're battling and then having to, so just get off and go and do it. So we are gonna retire her officially too, as of today, which is um, Thursday, uh, September 24th. All right, um, and uh, hopefully she'll get better, you guys. You guys, next story up, they say that uh, T.I., the intelligent adjacent, has found himself um, in some sort of cryptocurrency scam. Now, I don't understand cryptocurrency at all. Um, I have not tried to sit down and figure out what it is. Um, I don't know anything about Bitcoin. I don't know anything about any of that. But I know that it's big right now. And I know that people are making a lot of money off of the whole Bitcoin thing. Bitcoin, not Bitcoin. Uh, maybe Bitcoin in this uh, situation because they say that um, he's been fined $75,000 for his involvement in a, a fraudulent case um, when it comes to Bitcoin. So him and uh, a few other people, but most notably this man named Ryan Felton, who is a producer, a movie producer, I believe, they had, okay, I'm gonna read it to you because I, I don't know anything about it. They were in trouble over fraudulent initial coin offerings, which is called ICO, okay? And basically, TI participated in the sale of Flick tokens, which are unregistered securities, okay? Um, back in 2017, he falsely claimed he was a Flick co-owner, and in one month, he sold somewhere around $165,000 in tokens. So he definitely was involved. His name was lent to the project or to this whole selling of these tokens. And um, yeah, fraudulently had people, I guess, buy into this. Um, he has not confirmed or denied that he was involved in everything. See, what it comes down to is just, this is just my opinion, okay? But you know, we... <laughs> You know, people trying to make them some money out there. Um, people are trying to get involved in, in things that, you know, they may not necessarily know about, but, you know, are trying to learn more and get involved in investment and, um, you know, things that are going to further the security, financial security of not only our family, but our family's family and things like that. So, you know, people are trying to create generational growth here. I'm not mad at that at all. Okay. Um, but, it's obviously a very involved and intricate um, thing that you have to really be well versed in. And you cannot just allow people to just come at you and tell you, okay, we're going to tell people to do these flick tokens and this Bitcoin thing and the ICOs and the whatever. And you don't really know what you're doing. And then you put your name on it, you put your stamp on it, and then, you know, you get you're responsible for it. I have a feeling that the intelligent adjacent did not know what he was getting himself in, in, himself involved in. He's heard the word Bitcoin. He knew the, the big, you know, the new um, <laughs> thing with people getting involved in Bitcoins. And maybe he thought he was getting on the, 
on the front end of a wave that was going to make him a lot of money. Well, turns out no, because it was all fraudulent. It wasn't real. And uh, now he's saying he does regret trusting his name and likeness, I guess, to Ryan Felton and the other people that was involved in this case, um, you know, for him to even be in this much trouble. Now, $75,000 in the grand scheme of things is not that much money, okay, when you're talking about T.I. Um, he's lucky because I guess things could have gotten way worse, for him. And it seems like as I read the story that Ryan Felton is going to find himself probably in more trouble because as things went on and they sold more and more, he, he made like a $2.2 .2 million profit. Okay. So way more than the $165,000. And so, yeah, I believe that case will go on and on. But T.I., his involvement, $75,000, okay? Y'all let me know. Do, do you guys know anything about this whole Bitcoin thing? I mean, even on uh, P-Valley, you know, um, Autumn Haley was trying to explain to Mercedes things about Bitcoin. I've always heard it in passing, but I just don't understand what it is. I mean, they even talked about Bitcoins on um, Green Greenleaf, you know, when, when, when uh, 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 Bishop you know, was involved with Wicked City Woman, Rochelle, and she took all his money, you know, him thinking that he was doing that whole Bitcoin thing. So I've always heard it in passing, but I just don't understand exactly what it is. So maybe somebody can give me the real short version. Okay, the real short version, y'all. Don't get down there with no five pages of explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Whatever it takes for you guys to explain it. I mean, you get down there in the comments and let me know. But yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you guys like this. If you're going to try to get involved in investing in things like that, please do your research. Do not get yourself tied up in situations where you not only lose money, but you might find yourself in jail. Okay? I guess T.I. had to learn the hard way. He ain't going to jail, but you know, $75,000 shorter today than he was yesterday. All right, you guys, so uh, the Times 100 Most Influential People magazine, the list came out yesterday, and um, there are quite a few Black people that have made that list, um, and the notables we'll talk about, Meg, Meg the Stallion, better known as Megan Jovan Ruth Pete. Uh, she made the list, 25-year-old um, rapper. You guys all know who Meg the Stallion is. Um, this is definitely her year, and uh, she made the list. They talked about, uh, in, in an article on CNN's website, of how she's harnessed the power of her influence to forge genuine progress, okay? Um, they talked about how she has lost pretty much most of her family. You know, her mother died, who was also her manager just recently. Um, her father has passed, her grandmother passed, I believe her mother and her grandmother passed right around the same time. And um, she has still been able to um, be successful in her career and for the most part, make the best decisions that has made her get to where she is. And now we have her on the Times, um, you know, 100 influential list. So good for Meg the Stallion. I like Meg. You know, and I think that Meg is going to be okay. Um, we also have Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade on that list. Okay, they made the list because of their support of um, not only, but in large part because of their support of their daughter, um, Zaire. I believe that's what she calls herself. I think that's what her name is. Um I won't get into it with you guys on whether the, the child wants to be known as a daughter. So that's what we call it. They have always been supportive of their child. You know, that is Gabrielle Union's step, uh, stepdaughter. Um, and their work in the LGBTQ community um, was noted by them being added to that list. And there are many other notables, uh, black people. Let me see, I, I, I wrote down some of the names of the black people that made the list. So uh, let me tell you who we got. We had Meg Thee Stallion, we had Dwayne and Gabby. Okay, we had Michael B. Jordan, The Weeknd, okay, singer. <laughs> what is it? The Weeknd still influencing? Child, what do y'all listen to from The week? <laughs> I mean, I have never, I've always felt like he's overrated. 
And you know, I know I got some weekend fans out there, but child, I just, I don't get it. Okay, Jennifer Hudson, singer Jennifer Hudson, uh, Tommy, Ediyami, Ediyami, Edi, you know, she is the the, the author of uh, The Children of Blood and Bone and also um, The Children of Virtue and Vengeance. We read both of those books in my Roxy Reads uh, book club, the shameless plug here, you guys. If you do want to join, you are welcome to do so. We have a good time over there. I have a lot of people that have joined um, who, you know, said at the beginning of the year that they wanted to read more books, and this book club has helped them do so. Um, and we read both of her books, Tommy, Tommy's. You know, she did make the list as well, so congratulations to her. That's my shameless plug. I'll leave a little link right here for y'all. <laughs> We had Tiffany Haddish, we had Cardi B, we have Issa Rae, we have Trevor Noah, okay? We have Ryan Coogler, he is the director of Black Panther, amongst other movies. We had Sterling K. Brown, Lena Waithe, creator of Chicago, I mean, The Shy, and many other um, projects um, that have to do with the Black experience. We have Chadwick Boseman, you know, our beloved um, T'Challa, who just recently died from um, um, colon cancer. We have singer Rihanna, Janet Mock, who is the creator of the TV show Pose, Maxine Waters, who um, is a forever fighter down in Los Angeles, California. I mean, I remember we used to see Maxine Waters, honey. She would show up at the schools, the elementary schools, at the PTA meetings. I mean, she would walk the streets and knock on doors and everything. Maxine Waters has been out there for a hundred years. Um, Virgil Abloh, okay, the off-white owner, the um, creative, creative director, I believe, or the director, direction of uh, Louis Vuitton right now. Um, media giant Oprah Winfrey, uh, basketball player Kevin Durant. Um, there are others there, but those are the names that um, stood out for me. They all made the 100 most influential list at Times Magazine. So congratulations to them all. And um, <clears throat> y'all read the list. It's actually pretty interesting, all the people that they have on there. Um, and uh, even YSAP made it on there, which I was just like, I mean, I guess he is influencing a whole fun bunch of fucking people. I mean, half of the nation, um, you know, let some polls tell it. I don't even know why I talked about him. I'm mad I even mentioned him in this part. Let, uh, Y'all erase him from your memory. Because <laughs> on my fucking nerves. Oh, anyway, you guys, getting back to what we were talking about. Congratulations to all of those people that I just named. Minus one Y sap uh, for making the list. Okay, so somebody wanted me to talk about the Emmys. Um, you know, I usually love watching the Emmys because to me, the Emmys is, um, first of all, I, I watch a lot of the shows, well, I think that I do anyway, of um, that are usually nominated for the Emmys. So, you know, it's nice to see that the shows that you've lent all of your time to watching, binge watching or whatever, you know, get the recognition that you feel that they deserve, Okay. Um, I said that usually it's shows that I watch. But this year, obviously, some of these shows I ain't never watched, okay? But I also like watching the Emmys because I just love the whole grandeur. I love to watch people in their dresses. I love the red carpet. I love all of the hoopla around the pomp and circumstance of that part of the Emmys. And then just watching them get on stage and, like I said, get recognized for their work. You know, I, I do enjoy it. Um, this year, of course, the Emmys was different because of COVID-19, because of social distancing, um, because we can't have hundreds of people under one roof at the at the Staples Center, you know, or wherever the, the Emmys are usually done. I guess it's done probably at the, um, uh, what is that next door to the Staples Center? Y'all know what I'm talking about. But you can't have all these people under one roof, Okay otherwise you're going to have a super spreader event. So what they decided this time is it was going to be virtual. Now we've seen the BET Awards be done virtually and we saw the MTV um, Awards done virtually. So now we are at the Emmys, okay? Um, I did watch it. I watched probably the first hour and a half and then I was over it because um, not only is it a little different when you've got to do things virtually, even though they did have some people there at the studio, I mean, at the actual place up on stage, like that part I did like. 
Um, and it was even cool to see these groups of shows, you know, the cast members of different shows in different places, you know, all over the world. Um, we saw the cast of um, Insecure. They were at a football field, like a football stadium. Um, you know, people were in London. We had people that were at somebody's house. You know, we saw groups of people that were together. I mean, you know, so that part was cool. I just only watched an hour and a half because it was just like the whole thing was like Shit's Creek. And, um, um, I, I, you know, no hate because, I mean, if you deserve to win, then you deserve to win. But I don't watch the show and I don't know who these people are. I mean, of course, I know who Eugene Levy is. Um, and obviously, <laughs> I knew who his son was, even if I didn't know who his son was. But I knew, looking at the eyebrows, I said, he has got to be his son. Um... You know, but I, but like, it was just like, it was so repetitive. The same people were winning over and over and over. And um, I'm I'm not hating at all. If you deserve it, fine. I just don't, you know, I, this ain't exciting for me to just see the same people over and over and over. You know, how many times can you thank, you know, these same people over and over? So I was just like, I'm over it. And then it was like, this, between Shit's Creek and Succession, they was, they won everything. Okay, the rest of the people might as well have went on and, you know, I hope they was doing something. If they was at the house, they was cooking their dinner and, you know, playing solitaire on their phone at the same time. Because it was just like, girl, you ain't never going to get an award tonight. But congratulations to them. You guys tell me that the show is very, very good. And I am definitely going to check it out. I guess this was their last season. And, um, yeah, historically, people, shows that go out, you know, well... Um, they usually do clean up at the Emmys. That does generally happen. Um, but not only just because they were ending from what you guys tell me, the show was really funny, very entertaining. And um, so I'm going to check it out. I've heard the name. I just never have watched it. Succession, I didn't know about, but I mean, I guess I'll check that one out too. Um, but um, yeah, I, you know, good for them. Regina King, I did see that Regina King um, won for Best Actress for... Um, the watch well watchman i don't think it's called the watchman just watchman that show gets so much recognition and wins so many awards and or is at least nominated for many awards and they only lasted one season okay like why did they not renew that show is there more to it than i mean did, is it one of those critically acclaimed shows that nobody was watching or is it you know i don't understand but uh, Regina King did win for that. So congratulations to her. She looked really nice. Did you guys see on the red carpet? I only saw the last 30 minutes of the red carpet. I was so mad at myself. But um, when she was on there and she showed her blue dress, that was just beautiful. I was just like, oh, Regina, you just be doing it every every damn year. You know, she represents fully. Love Regina King. And um, she is a Hollywood darling. And it's nice to see because here's this black woman that everybody in Hollywood seems to have respect for and, um, you know, don't have a bad story to tell about her. So she's doing a damn thing out there. Look good. Winning awards. I mean, uh, Regina wins an, a main award every year for like maybe the last four or five years. She's done. She's done it like that, you guys. So proud of her. But, um, yeah, other than that, I was just like, I didn't had enough of this. I done had enough, y'all. So, um, what did you guys think? Zendaya, that was another one who won. Um, she, her, hers was actually pretty surprising. She won, um, she was like, what did she win for? No, I think Regina, she also won for Best Actress. Was, was hers, no, I think Regina King was Best Supporting Actress. Zendaya also won some sort of Best Actress Awards. I'm not sure if it was supporting or not. I think that Zendaya actually was Best Actress because she is the main character. And I think Regina King's character in The Watchmen is not the main character. So maybe Regina's was supporting. But anyway, Zendaya won for her show, her um, role in Euphoria. And she's the youngest girl to do so. And then, of course, a, a girl of color. Black girl, so good for her. I thought she looked beautiful when she presented the award for whatever she was presenting for. I thought she looked beautiful when she won. I mean, she just looked like like a little dolly. I just, the whole little look was, I was like, yes, girl. She does well every single time, every single time. Um, but that was it. I, I didn't write down anybody else. 
I wrote the Emmy, Zendaya, Schitt's Creek, Regina won, Succession cleaned up as well. That's what I put for my nose. <laughs> That was all that I seemed to see that night, you guys. Um, but if there's more to it, y'all let me know. Um, I love Jimmy Kimmel, and I thought he did well with what he had to do, okay? Um, and, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for me. But you guys let me know if there was other things that I missed in the Emmys that you guys want to talk about, then y'all have at it down in the comments below. <laughs> you guys so they say that amanda seals is quite pissed with the girls over at the real or maybe it's not the girls maybe it is the producers and you know the people that are responsible for the direction of the show um they say that or amanda seals says that before she left the show she was trying to do something on there called black lives matter university um or if it's not that name, then it was the idea of this, which was like, I guess, like a whole little kind of like school in session about black lives and the fact that they matter, that they would do a segment on the real. OK, well, it seems that they have adopted that into the program scheduling and to the segments on the show. And of course, we know that Amanda Seals left. She's saying that it was her idea down to the the seal because ev evidently they use like a seal you know that's supposed to look like as if you were at private school or something you know how all schools have seals um down to the seal that was her idea she said that the real stole it and she don't appreciate that shit so <clears throat> i don't think the real really cares uh nobody over there has come out you know in answer or, or responded to her feeling like they have stolen from her um, and uh, I'm sure that Amanda will have probably more to say about it on her podcast. I don't know if um, any of the other girls have have separately or independently, you know, responded to anything that Amanda still says. I don't think that they will because, you know, they are on the show. Um, has the new season even started? I know that Garcelle Beauvais, you know, is supposed to be on there. Um, and I guess they are still looking for another replacement. They want to have five people on that panel. So far, they only have four, which is Lonnie, Adrian, uh, uh, what is the girl's name? Jenny and, um, now Garcelle. So they're still looking for one more person. I think I've heard them say Kiki Palmer, um, is a good, uh, possible person for their, um, I think they said Kelly Osborne would, I was like, Kelly Osborne? No, 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 y'all, I'm getting that mixed up. Kelly Osborne, they're saying, might be on the talk. But y'all look at me getting these shows mixed up. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, Amanda is pissed at them. She said that they done stole her shit. Give her back her Black Lives Matter University. <laughs>